In this video, we're going to provide a very brief introduction to device law of heat capacities. Okay, in the last video, we have seen the third law of thermodynamics and how that third law can be used to obtain absolute more entropies of any substance like water, glucose, sucrose, CO2, any substance that you want at uh, temperatures that are of interest in thermodynamics like 298 Kelvin or perhaps physiological temperatures. Now the way that we've done that uh, has been to just uh, simply use a third law of thermodynamics which tells you that a zero Kelvin then the uh, absolute moral entropy of a substance is zero if it's a perfectly pure crystalline sur uh, substance and then simply just take that uh, zero of entropy at zero Kelvin to uh, the same pure substance, but now in whatever phase you want uh, and at the temperature that you want through various steps of heating and phase transitions. So what I have right here is, is just simply a, a summary of uh, the entropy versus temperature diagram for molecular oxygen okay, taken from uh, the solid state at zero Kelvin where the entropy is zero to the gas state uh, 298 Kelvin, where the entropy happens to be 205 joules per mole Kelvin. So here you can clearly see the two phase transitions, isothermal, right, so that is fusion, that is vaporization, and here you have the three heating steps, that is the heating of the solid, heating of the liquid, and heating of the gas. Well, great. Now, this video actually uh, simply tells you uh, a historical uh, a fact of importance, and that is that uh, when these theories were being developed when the second thir uh, third laws were uh, uh, elucidated. Right? Uh, the problem is that the technology was actually not up to par. So calculating how the entropy of a substance changes at really low temperatures it was actually very difficult. The reason is that uh, you have to recognize that when you calculate the change in entropy when heating or cooling, what you're actually doing is this. You're simply uh, taking this uh, differential of Q reversible over the temperature, but again, if you're uh, under th uh, conditions of thermal equilibrium, then this simply turns uh, uh, at constant uh, pressure, this simply turns into uh, CPM, if this is a more uh, entropy, CPM uh, uh, over T, differential of T. Right, that's what you have to do to calculate this change in entropy when heating uh, in any one of these three steps. Now, so the problem is that the, the success of, these, of the calculation of these steps hinges on whether you actually have these more heat capacities of constant pressure. And then again, notice that uh, this was you know, the turn of the 20th century, perhaps a little bit earlier than that. Uh, so there was no way that people could get to really cold temperatures. We just didn't have technology to go to very co uh, cold temperatures to measure what those heat capacities were, we do need to actually calculate this change in entropy. Right, so the question is, well, what, how do they did this? Well, the, 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 the way that they, they did this is with models, right? So uh, through the study of crystals and how they vibrate, uh, the Bai was able to uh, come up with a law that actually tells you how the heat capacity of a crystal changes with temperature when well, the temperature is really low, right? So we're talking about uh, this range where you can, you may be able to see in the video a red trace. So that typically is in between zero Kelvin and maybe 16 Kelvin or so. That's uh, the range of validity of this law. But the law is very simple. Uh, it just says that uh, the uh, more heat capacity at constant pressure is simply A uh, T cubes, right? So you have a cubic dependence of the heat capacity on temperature. Now from there, uh, we just simply can carry out the integration just to show you how uh, this works. Right, so that change in entropy that you will have right here, so we're simply trying to calculate how much the entropy changes in this range right there, which again was really hard to do uh, well over 100 years ago. Right, so uh, that simply is going to be as follows. So you will have here your zero Kelvin to perhaps uh, uh, 16 Kelvin, right, and then you just plug in this AT cube over T differential of T. This A is just a parameter that depends on the substance, right? So uh, the way that a crystal of oxygen behaves uh, is very different from the way that a crystal of ice behaves or methane and so forth, right? So this is a parameter that is specific to each substance. Okay, but uh, that being said, then uh, we can actually carry out the integral, integral 
uh, quite easily, so you can uh, do that. And then you just have to integrate that, which is going to be uh, a thirds uh, T cubed evaluated from zero Kelvin to whatever temperature you're interested in. In our case, that would be 16 Kelvin. Okay, so that's that's kind of what this law is. Uh, so from there, then you can you can calculate what the entropy would be at 16 Kelvin, right? Notice that that is going to be the entropy at 16 Kelvin minus the uh, more entropy at zero Kelvin. But of course, the third law tells us that this is zero for a perfectly pure uh, crystalline uh, substance, right? So this is simply going to be equal to your a thirds uh, t cubed. That is that when you put here t zero, then that will be zero. So that's essentially uh, what you have right here with this T would be whatever temperature you're interested in, 16 Kelvin, or maybe you're interested in 10 Kelvin or 8 Kelvin, that's just the temperature that you have to put right there. So it's a really simple law, uh, and it turns out that uh, later on, when uh, we were able to develop technology to actually measure those heat capacities, it turned out that this uh, the vial of heat capacities worked out really well. Okay, so it was kind of a triumph of theory in that uh, the bio was simply used in models, but he was able to deduce that the way that the heat capacities ought to change with temperature at very low temperatures should be like this, and again, we prove with theory that that was correct. Okay, so this is uh, all that we have about uh, device low heat capacities. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to uh, calculate uh, or to estimate whether the um, uh, chemical reaction would be spontaneous or not using the second law.